profile for today a Retina 3C camera and the description of the fault on this one is that the film advance lever is stuck and it certainly is stiff and there's no sort of discernible um, spring action there returning it either so there's something seriously wrong with that I would say so we better investigate what's going on with this particular camera and so I shall be in from the top first I'll remove my meter dial and I'm just going to see where that scale is set this is a single range meter three big C, three small C's the later, later ones had a single range meter as well and with a single range meter like that you need to remove the dial before you remove the top cover because the dial on the three small C with the dual range meter the dials were part of the top cover on this one they are fixed to the meter which is underneath the top cover right so let's be in that screw is a little bit loose but not suspiciously so the state of those screws suggests someone has been in before but they're not um, badly marked or anything Right, so top cover off. Something just fell out. That little rubber thing. Now that little rubber buffer fits up in the end of the top cover here and its job is to hold that meter down firmly. That meter in this case is just hooked over a post and unusually the tab's not broken off. Well, I can see it's cracked but it's not broken off. I'll remove the film release lever and the shutter button but not the shaft and I'm looking to see what I can see here yeah this camera is uniformly filthy in here there's a lot of uh, grit or sand the cocking rack has got absolutely mutilated teeth at this point There's a damaged tooth on the wheel at this point and the lever cannot return back because this is incorrectly timed. It's slipped on that wheel. It slipped on that gear. So if we remove the... Uh, that screw's loose. Very loose. I'll remove the cocking rack and see how the film advance behaves. So I've got a special tool here for removing that stud and it's a screwdriver that's been drilled out to clear the shaft. At the end it's got a slot cut across it to engage the flats on that uh, shaft. I made that years ago and it's been very helpful Prior to that, I was forced to use pliers and various other unsatisfactory methods. Right, off with that clamp plate, off with that broken cocking rack. Now immediately, the film advance lever dropped back into position. So I'll see what the action of that's like. It's sticky. There certainly feels to me probably dried grease oh it's very sticky given the amount of sand and rubbish at the top of the camera I'd say that it's exceptionally likely that there's sand and other rubbish in at the base of the camera too so at least it functions it's stiff we know the grease is probably dried out you can see a lot of sand and other rubbish it's going to need a new cocking rack it's got a damaged tooth on the gear on the top of the film advance now one damaged tooth is not the end of the world this only swings through an arc of about 
180 degrees, something like that. And so one part of this gear never ever touches the rack. So probably presuming the other, the rest of the gear is fine, I'll just make sure that that tooth begins its life over at this side and it will never come in contact with the rack. Well, I'll strip this mess down and if I see anything else interesting, I'll let you know. Well, I think I've found one of the contributing reasons for that shutter cocking rack failure. In here, this screw here, which holds down the bush for the top of the film advance, you'll see that's loose. Well, that sh screw has a shoulder on it and the job of the shoulder on that screw is to support the edge of the cocking rack to stop it pushing away from the gear on the top of the film advance. Well, with this being loose, that would allow the cocking rack to shift away from the gear slightly, which means that when the load goes on, the teeth tend to push away from each other. If the load is taken directly on the tip of the teeth, then failure uh, happens fairly quickly. So I think that was the a contributing factor to the failure of the shutter cocking rack. Not necessarily the only one. I'll carry on stripping this down. Well you can certainly see the sand and grit in here and all of that stuff will be contributing to the, the rough feel of this. Now this action, this business of slowly returning, that is a sure sign that the grease has dried out to a sticky, gooey, waxy mess. Well I've got the film advance shaft out of the camera. You can see immediately here on the take-up spool there's some film chips, quite a number of them. And they tend to jam things up, they just create a lot of pressure. In the camera body, let's get this round the right way, in the camera body, yeah, down at the base there, you can see that mass of film chips. Now that's, film chips are what you get, they're the bits of film on 35mm film between the sprocket holes. Now how would you achieve something like that? You could try rewinding the film without pressing the rewind button, that would certainly achieve it. You could wind right on to the end of the film, not having set the frame counter correctly to begin with, so that and force it when the film doesn't want to move any further. That would certainly achieve it too. One of those two methods is almost certainly the case, but whatever it is, you can put it down to clumsy use. So that filth there, that doesn't help. You can see how thick that grease down there is. It's nasty. Let's have a look at this... Uh, Film advance shaft itself. I'll pull the screws out. This is exceptionally sticky. You can see that doesn't even want to drop back down the shaft under the impetus of the spring. It's that gummed up with filth. A good soak in some uh, degreaser will shift all that rubbish. At the top of the camera, of course, we have the clutch. The clutch provides some measured slip so that the film travelling through the camera builds up on the take-up spool as it travels through, so the diameter would build up as you wound more film onto it, which would mean that the if this was geared Fixed it, fixedly to the sprocket, you would end up with a problem. This would be wanting to feed faster than this, and it would end up stripping out film. This all needs to be cleaned. It's all pretty sticky, but um, nothing terrible there. Just normal filth from old cameras. I've, have I seen anything else of interest while I've been going? Well, one of the things I've noticed is this. The leatherette is peeling off. Now, typically the leatherettes on the fronts of a Retina 3C camera are fixed pretty firmly, and I don't disturb them because 
they're inclined to break and of course there's no replacements here too you see it's all loose now typically that's a sign of corrosion underneath the leatherette makes the adhesive let go so I'll have to peel those pieces of leatherette off the back doesn't show any zeiss bumps so I'll look at the edges of that carefully but I'm not expecting to have to tackle that at all normally if your leatherettes are loose on the front it's corrosion and if that's the case almost certainly you'd end up with zeiss bumps on the back we're not seeing that so perhaps it was just a crappy glue job who would know here's the front door now I don't know what that nasty brown stuff there is but I'm sure it's not supposed to be in the camera so I'll have to clean that away carefully too all right to carry on well the further you dig the deeper you get into the sand and rubbish there's an awful lot of filth in there that's mostly sand and uh, dirt not much to speak of in the back of the camera of course apart from all those film chips and that paste of thick grease here's the shroud from the front again quite filthy lots of sand and uh, dried grease there and this piece is certainly no stunner either with all this filthy bits here I will gather them up these are the mechanical components that are off to the degreaser and once everything else has been cleaned by hand I shall be able to reassemble stuff well things were going very smoothly which should have had all the alarm bells ringing and the lights flashing of course you don't expect anything to go too smooth until I got to this stage and I went to put my dial back on the meter there and test my meter and there's something odd about that meter you'll see that the meter needle is sticking out at about this point no, no response to light but um, mechanically it shouldn't be doing that of course it should be pulled back to the stop under the influence of its return spring so something seriously wrong with that meter I know the camera's had a good thump there because I had to replace the glass in the top cover which was cracked so back into it see what I can find out about this meter I thought I was uh, just 10 minutes away from finished it just goes to show how wrong you can be always hold your finger on the top of the meter before lifting the top cover off otherwise it pulls off with it sometimes that can break things right so the meter the needle's swinging I can see the needle swinging but it's not swinging back to the rest position and I'm not seeing any response to light oh well the screw here on the cover is still has its black paint on it which was used to lock it in place So that suggests that somebody was very diligent about putting black paint back on there or they have not had this off. That's it, that's the cover off. I'll just take that little adjuster out while I've got it here and I'll look to see what I can see
What I'm looking for and expecting to see is some foreign body down the side of the armature blocking the movement. Its zero point appears to be in the middle, which means that something's been bent. It's a bit stoved in at the base. Perhaps, perhaps that's actually touching the movement. I will have to find out. No. Right, well I'll need to get a better pair of glasses on and inspect that and see if I can discover what's going on. So you're going to focus, think about it. Just about. This little hairspring down here is, is um, damaged, it's out of shape. Basically the coils are binding on each other. So I've got to tweak the end of that hairspring to get it back into a nice, neat, open spiral so that it doesn't bind on itself. So that's my next task. Of course, this is all very tiny. I love doing things like this. Well, I was able to get the hairspring back into shape. But unfortunately, it doesn't fix my problems because the meter movement is open circuit. So from a practical point of view, the only thing to be done with this particular camera would be to replace the meter entirely. Um, that being an expensive business because parts are exceptionally thin on the ground. And the probability of any replacement meter not being exactly accurate across the entire light level range due to the selenium cells being past their use by date, probably means that that might be a fairly futile exercise. Something that you would do in order to have a nice collectible camera apparently fully working, but it wouldn't take you, wouldn't help you with your exposures for taking photos particularly well. So I'm going to have to contact the owner of this camera and see what he wants me to do about it. Um, it's Otherwise, the camera is a perfectly functional camera, but that meter is never going to go again. As I wait for a response to come back from far, far away, I'll carry on putting this camera together. I still haven't put the leatherettes back in place, so I might just as well do that. And uh, I would say that it's probably a uh, better than a 50-50 chance that the owner will decide that they do not want a new exposure meter or a replacement exposure meter fitted because of the cost and because it's probably not going to be completely accurate anyway. So that being the case, it's very likely that I will not need to be back inside here. Let's just put all the dials back in place. And hit around 180 degrees. I see on my writing instructions the owner had made a mention there on the other side of the page that uh, the exposure meter was broken. Of course I didn't read that part. That 
will do. A rewind knob in place. Right, the base of the camera and the leatherette. Those uh, glasses are no good to me. They're doing things very close. Right, well I've cleaned off all the old adhesive and rubbish from the base of the camera. I'll just check the fit of my leatherette. That looks good. It looks like it will lay comparatively flat. So that's perfect. Now, where's the glue? Okay, that should be sufficient adhesive. Now I've just got to spread it out, make sure it covers the leatherette evenly, particularly making sure I've got cover right to the edges. That looks good. Right around there where the adhesive is bridging the holes in the leatherette and pop that in place. Now leatherettes normally shrink over time so it's quite normal for them to be curled up at the edges and also to be reluctant to fit down neatly over a raised boss like this one here. So you often have to uh, be careful to press them down around something like that and around that uh, rewind button too. That looks good. And pop the film advance lever back in place. and fit all three screws in position. Do them up tight. Check the action, make sure there's no problems. That's all good. Put the leatherette patch on the advance lever. Now I want to scrape that off because it looks to me like there's a rough patch on the back of that leatherette. So I'll just scrape that off. Yeah it's got some had some quite thick adhesive, some quite hard lumpy adhesive on the back of this. I'm always grizzling about other people's choice of adhesives but of course there's every likelihood that they chose what they chose to use for a very good reason. It probably worked well for them, it's just in the last intervening 30, 40 or 50 years the adhesive has uh, hardened up and doesn't look so attractive anymore. When I worked for Kodak and the cameras were comparatively current no time was lost in removing leatherettes for servicing. Any leatherette that gave the slightest bit of trouble was just torn off completely and you would just fit new leatherettes from the parts bins. Of course we don't have large numbers of uh, replacement parts 60 year old cameras so all of things like that 
all the parts that were pretty much considered consumables that's all all changed I'll just clean that lever this is the back catch cover Yes, thinking about that bad exposure meter reminds me that a Retina 3 Big C which I bought as a project for myself has a bad meter too. No, that did not go well. The spring popped out of position. As a result, the spring would have been binding underneath the lever instead of sitting in correctly so I've got to try that again that time I think I've got it it's always an act getting that spring in position if it has too little tension it won't stay in place correctly if it has too much tension it won't stay in place correctly it wants to pop out of position so it's certainly something that you need to be uh, to watch carefully It seems to move nicely and that's good. So the leatherettes at the front of the body. Well, normally of course I don't need to remove these leatherettes and if I do need to remove these leatherettes it's usually because of corrosion and if there's corrosion there usually the leatherettes will come off very easily. There didn't really appear to be much corrosion there. The leatherettes came off quite easily not as easily as some but I've, I'm not sure why they'd come loose that's the original adhesive had just uh, given up perhaps skin oils or other polishes had penetrated the leatherette and caused the adhesive to let go of the leatherette not entirely clear and like a lot of those puzzles it's uh, they might be intellectually interesting but they don't get you any further down the road knowing what the cause was you've still got to deal with it in exactly the same way That looks good. So now I'll get its mate in place. And this one I notice has got a tiny pinhole in it somewhere. Yeah, it there. That will probably be invisible once this is in position. And if it isn't, a tiny spot of black wax and it'll it'll be gone for good. It will be like it was never there. You can hear all those terrible noises in the background. There's some roadworks or something going on down the street. Been a bit over generous with the adhesive on this one, I think.
it should do. Of course, it was the corners here and here lifting that alerted me to the fact that those leatherettes weren't stuck down as firmly as they might be. So those lifted corners will be reluctant to stick down because they'll have hardened into their lifted position. That's looking good. And that, I think, would probably just about be it. So, our Retina 3C all back together again. The meter is dead, but at least it looks correct. Um, and the owner may or may not want me to replace that with a, an apparently working example. It depends whether they're going to use the camera and are focused on its usability or whether they want one that apparently works because it's going into their collection. So, thanks for watching.